Hey, what's going on, Cashflow Hackers? It is Chris with Life 180, and uh, I'm really excited to share this video with you. Now, um, I'm not sure how you got here. Uh, if you are currently reading the Cashflow Hacking book, or if you are somebody who's just seeing this on YouTube for the first time, if in which case that's, that, that is where you're coming from, I would say go down below, check it out, get your free copy of Cashflow Hacking. Uh, go to cashflowhackingbook.com. You'll check that out, go, and, and I'm telling you, it'll help you so much with your personal finances. But the inspiration for this video is when I was writing the book, I wanted, the, the objective of the book was to keep it nice and short. I wanted to make this really digestible because too often personal financial information is too complicated, right? So we wanted to make this as simple as possible. And while I was going through this with the editor, I just, I started looking at it. I was like, there's so much more I wanna say. And when I started thinking about what I wanted to say, I realized that the book would get more long and convoluted. And oftentimes it's easier to communicate in video. That's why I do YouTube videos. And, 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 and a picture says a thousand words. Now, if you're looking at the book, you'll also see the diagram of the Life 180 pyramid, right? And the, and the conversation around that. Now, it was really hard to give that image justice, right? Like to, because there's just too much going on with it. And so the purpose of this video is to walk you through that conversation and to get you to really understand everything that I want to make sure uh, that I'm conveying in the book. And I need you to really understand this as you go through the book because it truly is the foundation of everything. I'm a big believer. People need to understand the importance. I say this all the time of investing or of saving with the intent of investing when we need to save before we invest, right? Before we invest our money and take risks, we got to make sure we have our financial foundation of safe, secure, liquid, accessible capital in place. And the purpose of this, and I know I say that a lot, and a lot of people don't understand and they think maybe it's, it's, it's not as necessary or that, that I'm a little extreme about it, but what I'm about to show you is going to make you see why it's so important. And here's, here's what I want to do. I want to get into uh, what I call the financial pyramid, right? So what I call the Life 180 financial pyramid, okay? So this is, um, I'm just gonna do the best I can with that. There we go. So here's the Life 180 Pyramid. So basically at the bottom of the pyramid, and, and the reason we call it a pyramid is because of the fact that it's, it's all based on safety, right? Like it, you, you know, as you build a pyramid, you have to build it from the bottom up. You can't, uh, and, it, and as you do, when you have that foundation, that stability of the widest portion, the most stable, strong portion, a, a pyramid is pretty much the most stable object in the world. It cannot get knocked over. It's pretty much just the physics of it, right? So what we want to do is we want to invest for safe money first, right? And, and so what does this mean? So before we get into taking medium and high risk, which is how we want to build our pyramid, it's, it's like we're building a pyramid. Imagine if we had three blocks, how would you build your pyramid? You would go the biggest, widest foundation on the bottom, then you would stack the next one on, then you would stack the next one on, right? And so the question is, what's in the bottom block? What does that safety look like? Well, that, that's where you're gonna have you know, your insurances, that's where you're gonna have, uh, you know, and, and that can be car, that can be home, it can be umbrella, right it can be um it can be savings money right it could be life insurance you know ultimately this is this is making sure that no matter what happens you're building your life so you can make amazing financial decisions and you're going to understand why now before you do any anything else and by the way this is what's taught in um the certified financial planner program if you go get your CFP, they're going to teach you the financial pyramid. They're going to teach you all this. And so the reason I call this a life 180 pyramid talk though, is because this is the reality of the world that we live in. This is what happens in the world. We live in a world where we're taught that the younger you are, the more risk you can take, which is if you've seen my videos, you know that I think that's one of the greatest lies Wall Street tells anybody. And they have you build your pyramid from the, the bottom up, right? Um, actually, I'm going to do this. Like, let's just, let's just change this and I'm going to make it green, 
right? And so then that will make sense, right? So boom. So they that's the ground, right? So we're gonna just go with that. So they they make you build it from the bottom up. And 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 so what they do is they say, like, let's let's go high risk first. The younger you are, the more risk you can take. So don't worry about saving. Don't worry about savings accounts and don't worry about these other investments. You know, the younger you are, the more risk you can take. Dump it into Wall Street, dump it into mutual funds, dump it into all these things that you don't understand. Buy and hold for the long term future that, you know, you don't understand all the variables that are going to actually uh, going to be there for you to be successful. Right. You don't know what inflation is going to be. You don't know what the market returns are going to be. You don't know what the tax environment is going to be. You don't know what the political risk is going to be. You don't know what the economic environment, the boom bust cycles between now and when you're going to retire over a 20, 30, 40 year period. You don't know what any of that looks like. Right. And so how can you plan to get any predictable result if you don't know what the answers are to the variables? that have the greatest impact on the success of said strategy. You just can't do it. Think about it, like really back that up and, and make logical sense of it. It makes no sense. And so what I'm talking about here is we look at the world around us and we go, okay, the average person has zero money, right? I mean, it's 64% of Americans right now, literally 64% can't come up with 2K can't come up with 2000 bucks if they need it in case of emergency or opportunity. They just don't have it. That's a sad, sad number. 2000 bucks, guys. Like that, that shouldn't be the way it is. And why is it? It's because everybody's got their money saved in high risk vehicles. And not only are they in high risk assets, but they're in vehicles that you have deferred your ability to access them, right? In qualified accounts like IRAs, 401ks, uh, that's where over 70% of all money saved for retirement is in this country is in 401ks, IRAs, qualified accounts of the like, right? And so what does that mean? Well, that means when you need access to it, it, it most, let's think about it this way. We know the market goes in cycles, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come over here real quick. We know the market goes up and it comes down and it goes up and it comes down and it goes up and it comes down and it goes up and it comes down, right? So when it comes down, it comes down faster, right? This is obviously not a, a graph to scale, but when it comes down, it comes down faster. And so the, the thing is, is if you've got all your money, you know, in the bottom of your pyramid here, right? And, and this is where you're saving your money in this high period. What happens when, when you hit this down cycle, like 2008, like the dot-com bubble, like the beginning of COVID, the rich get richer, the poor get poorer, the middle class shrinks and becomes less wealthy because inflation still keeps happening to us. And what happens is during these downtimes, you can feel good about how you were because you rode this up and you made money all the way up. But then what happens, because you didn't have your foundation built, right? Because you didn't have this, um, let's just say right here, you didn't have this foundation built, right? Uh, over over on uh, on your, like the way it should be built on the on the right side, left side of the pyramid, I should say, you are exposed because what happens is there's thing this thing called, we talk about it a lot, it's called opportunity, right? And we use the phrase opportunity cost a lot. So the bottom line is when the when the economy goes through a down cycle, in this moment right here, in this moment right here, in this moment right here, what happens is human behavior kicks in and we have to survive. We have to put food on our table. We have to pay our bills. We got to make our car payments, our mortgage, and all these other things that we have going on, right? And so because of that, it forces people to make bad financial decisions because if we don't have our life structured properly to live, thrive, and endure, and, and actually be able to take advantage of these environments because we know they're systematically gonna happen. And by the way, this is when the wealth get wealthy get wealthier. This is when the rich get richer. And this is when the gap between the wealthy and the middle class gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Nobody wants to talk about it. Just go look at the math and go look at the statistics and the history. I, it, it's proven. And so if we know that's the case, well, why is it that we, we say, okay, when the opportunity goes down for people like 95% of Americans, it's actually probably like 98 and this is 5%, right? It's probably actually more like 98 and 2%, but we're just going to go with 95 and 5 for this, for this conversation. When the opportunity goes down for the 95%, the opportunity goes up. Why? Because here's the deal. Let's say the market crashes and you lose 30% of your, of your value that you have saved. All the savings that you had gets wiped out, or not all of it, but let's say 30, 40, 50% of it gets wiped out, right? What happens is this starts to tumble. Why? 
because your whole financial foundation is built on a lack of reality, is built on you having all your money in risky assets. And because of the fact that what happens when opportunity goes down, what happens when the economy struggles in these environments? What really happens is people, the economy struggles, people lose their jobs, you know, the people need access to money. And if you are not prepared and you don't have enough savings, like real savings, not money in your account, what happens is you have to liquidate your 401k. And like it, it's, it's crazy how much money that people pay in taxes and fees. I, the last statistic I saw was from an article in 2014. So it's a little old and, and I bet the number's worse now. And by the way, this was during a good economic environment, right? The 2014 was a good year. What happened is people paid $7 billion in penalty just to access their 401k. $7 billion to access their qualified account, not just 401k. It could be 401k, IRA, so on and so forth. $7 billion just in penalty to access your money. That is a wealth transfer from you to the government, to Wall Street, you know, however you want to phrase that. It's your money being taken, stripped away from you simply because you weren't structured properly. That's $7 billion. It's a lot of money. And so, and this is the thing, out of the 64% that said they had access to two, uh, their, uh, their $2,000 in case of emergency opportunity, 70% of those people, by the way, said they would have to pull it from a qualified account. So that really tells me that it's not really 64%. It's like 90% of people don't have access. At least 75, 80% of people don't have access to uh, $2,000 if they need it, which is a scary, scary statistic. So this falls over. And this is why it's important to start here and to have a long-term view. You have to invest for a long-term view. And when you do that, you realize that this isn't about a short sprint. This isn't about you know, sprint number one here, right? This isn't about sprint number two. This isn't even about sprint number three or four, right? This is about it making it one long endurance marathon. But the only thing you can do to, to ensure that you're successful in that is to make sure that you build your financial foundation right over here. And you have to make sure that you have the safety, that you have the savings, and that you make your decisions around um, how you do that with reality, right? And like not with emotion, it's gotta be based on math and statistics. And so I am telling people that you need two years of income in savings, liquid accessible cash. Why do I say that? Because I think you need it for emergency and I think you need it for opportunity. Now, if you're reading the book, What's happening here is you realize that the opportunity is what we're talking about. That's what cash flow hacking is all about. You need to access the capital for opportunity because when the, the times go down here, that's when the opportunity, you know, when in these moments, right? I'm going to start using a different color because red is bad, right? When, when you, when it's, when the rest of the world is struggling, Warren Buffett says you've got to make money when there's blood in the streets. And so that's what we're doing here. That's how we're trying to set this up. And so, you want to put yourself in the position so you're on the side that has opportunity to go up when everybody's struggling because we talk about leverage a lot. Well, that's leverage. If 95% of people are, are struggling and having to make bad financial decisions because they structured their lives poorly financially, you want to be in the position where you can capitalize on that because I, I always equate it to a pendulum. It always gets too optimistic and then it gets too negative. It's because of the way people handle their money. So you want to be in a position where you can be opportunistic when everybody's acting poorly with their money, when everybody's having to make really bad decisions because that's going to overcorrect the markets. That's going to make real estate prices come down. It's going to make business valuations come down. It's going to make all asset prices come down more. So everything's going to be on fire sale, right? And so you can take advantage of that and then ride the market up and, and get greater returns with less risk, like in a short period of time. That's what this is all about. But you have to have the discipline and the foresight to be able to make sure that you save this two years uh, for emergency or opportunity. Because I'm a big believer you need to have, the reason I say two years, you need one year, one year for emergency and one year for opportunity. Because that way you can always know that you're secure in your life and that your family's gonna be taken care of even when you're out of work and you have one year for opportunity. Now, to me, they always blend together at the beginning until you have enough 
and you can segment them. You always just want one big fund and you just gotta be educated so you can make good decisions as they present themselves to you. If you wind up in a situation where it needs to be your emergency fund, that's fantastic. You have it, you're protected. But when you get beyond that, right? When you when when maybe you're in a position where the the the, the economy takes a dive and you don't lose your job. Now that emergency fund can become an opportunity fund because you got fire sale prices all around you, right? And that's if you, if we know the market is cyclical, which we do. If we know it's going to tank from time to time and go through these massive corrections, which we know we have hundreds of years of history showing that this is just the behavior of the cycles of the markets. If we know that's the case, why is it that everybody's just trying to plan like this and not planning to do what the wealthy do and take advantage? The reason is lack of discipline and because people make emotional decisions. So what I'm trying to show you here is be emotional about winning and be emotional about doing what's right to protect you and to be opportunistic and not feel like you have to keep up with the Joneses because that's not going to get you where you want to go. And so the, the goal here with cash flow hacking, by the way, and I'm going to zoom out here, is to basically build a tunnel, right? I want to build a tunnel so we get you going from there to there. I want to get you out of this world because guess what? You may be in this position. You may not even know it. You may be uh, kind of positioned right now where you're, all your assets are in high risk and you know because of tax risk, market risk, right? Other risks that come along with this. You, you could be in a situation where this, this money could be gone. You maybe feel really good and really confident and like you're secure right now. But the bottom line is you're one bad six month cycle from this all falling down, you losing your job and you being having to start over. And if this is a 10 year period and you saved up and you felt really good and then the market crashes and you have to make bad decisions and because of how you handle your money, you have to go all the way down to zero because you have to spend what's left and you're liquidating negatively performing assets that's what's going to put you in a really, really bad uh, position. And then you got to start over and now you're not able to handle compounding the same way, because if you know how compounding works, you never want to interrupt it. And that's the only way to really do that and put yourself in a position to win like that is to do what I'm showing here in the left pyramid. So what do we do? So this is my overall philosophy and this is what cash flow hacking is all about is saying, listen, you got your safety built. You got, um, you, you have uh, your safe fund built. Now let's talk about the medium risk. What does that look like? This is the assets that we know are time tested, that have been around, that are gonna be cash flow. So medium have to be cash flow. They have to produce cash flow. You have to have control of them. They gotta get you immediate results. Uh, they have to appreciate. I'm just gonna write app. Uh, they have to um, give tax advantages. Right, and, and there also has to be leverage with them, but I'm not gonna get into that for this video. I won't go there. Um, for me, one of the best things to do here is real estate. Uh, and turnkey cash flow real estate is one of the things that you're gonna learn about more later in this book that's really important, right? And, and I think from that perspective, when you, when you look at it this way and you say, okay, how do, I, how do I disconnect from what the world around me is saying? And let's just look at this pragmatically. Let's look at it logically. And let's just look at the math behind it. Let's, and if you think about not rate of return, not all these different things, but let's just think about where am I trying to go? What is the result that I want in my life? What, what is my objective with my financial strategy? Well, it is to become financially free. That's why we call it a freedom number, right? And so when you look at that and you say, okay, my freedom number, well, the best way to get there is to, is to build from from the foundation. So you get your savings and then you invest in cash flow assets and then you allow those cash flow assets to compound, right? And as you do, you and, and you you cycle that through and you're gonna learn about this later in the book, you're gonna reach your compound number, right? Or your, your freedom number. And then once you have your freedom number, then you could do whatever you want. Now, now you're gonna be able to build towards a great legacy and only then once you have this foundation of the, the safety and then the medium, the cash flow asset risk, uh, you know, assets put into play. Only then should you get into, I'm gonna do it in red just so it's different. Uh, only then should you get into the higher risk. And this is stuff like growth stocks, like, uh, you know, it, it, it's just anything high growth, high risk, um, you know, that 
you know, is good and it could grow. And, and this, by the way, could outperform, by the way, I put sometimes uh, certain cryptos, speculation, NFTs, like things like that in here, because you don't know, they could get you where you want to go. This one little uh, piece of the triangle, even though from a mass perspective is a small percentage of, of the entire pyramid, it could end up getting you greater returns and everything, but not if you don't have the foundation below it built. Because if you don't, then you wind up in the position that we're at, you know, over here in this, in this situation where your whole life falls apart when you hit one bad wave of the economy. And so this is a long-term game. I can tell you during your life, you're gonna have, if, if you plan for 40 years for retirement, you're gonna have cycles. You're gonna have probably four to five boom bust cycles that you're gonna live through. That's just the math of it. And that's, that's just the way it goes. And so how you handle those four to five years, we'll call it, and that's it. In your whole 40 year career, 40 to 45 year career, you're gonna have four to five individual years that are gonna dictate whether you're gonna be successful in getting where you wanna go or not. And if you try to follow the buy and hold strategies and don't follow what I'm talking to you about, about saving, saving with the intent to invest and looking for opportunity to invest in cash flow assets, then you're gonna be missing the boat. Now, later in the book, we're gonna go through a lot of that. I'm gonna get into what are the best assets, what do you need the assets to do for you, what are the traits, what are the attributes of the assets that you need to be looking for. It's gonna get into a lot of detail. So I hope you find this valuable uh, in the YouTube video. Leave a comment in the comment section below. I'm happy to engage with anything. Um, and if you're reading the book, uh, please, Leave a comment in the section below. Let me know uh, what you're thinking about it. Let me know if it's helping you. Uh, but I look forward to talking to you soon. Have a blessed, inspirational day. And uh, keep enjoying the uh, learning process. We'll talk to you soon. See ya.